the right honorable leader of opposition in parliament who is watching virtually, cabinet ministers and ministers of state, your excellencies, the, uh, the high commissioners, the ambassadors and members of diplomatic corps, honorable members of parliament of Uganda and members of parliament of the East African Legislative Assembly, the guest speakers and presiding officers and their representatives, we have the right honorable Gemma Nunu Kumba, the speaker of the Transitional National Legislative Assembly of South Sudan. Right honorable, just wave. Welcome. The right honorable Catherine Hara, the speaker of Parliament of Malawi. You're most welcome. We have gone beyond East Africa. We are now in African Union. Right Honorable Lucas Moha. Right Honorable Mo Lucas, the Chairman of the National Council of Parliament of Namibia. The Right Honorable Chisangano Attractor, the first Deputy Pr Speaker of the National Assembly of Zambia. Most welcome. Honorable Andy Clifford, MP representing the Speaker of National Assembly of Seychelles. You're most welcome. The Senator Veronica representing the Speaker of National Assembly of Kenya. Most welcome. The traditional leaders, cultural and religious leaders present. Head of Public Service and Agencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to this inaugural sitting of the fourth session of 11th Parliament of Uganda. As you may be aware, it is a command of 1995 Constitution of Republic of Uganda in accordance to Article 101 that the President shall, at the beginning of each session of Parliament, deliver to Parliament an address on the state of nation. Therefore, during today's sitting, the, the House and the nation by extension will receive a presidential address on the state of nation. The state of nation address is an opportunity to reflect on our country's achievements in the previous year, the inherent challenges and government's legislative agenda for the subsequent session. The sitting is also to remind as that the five-year tenure of 11th Parliament is now at its second last year. This is a kind reminder. It is therefore a moment for a reflection on the gains that you've made, lessons that you've learned, and the milestones ahead of you. As we gather here today, I urge you, honorable members, to deeply reflect upon the Parliament's prayer, which reaffirms the objective of our roles towards ensuring the welfare of society and just government for humanity. Let us renew our solemn commitment to the creation of society that works for the good and dignity of our people. I take this opportunity to congratulate the honorable members of parliament for the successful accomplishment of a remarkable third session of 11th parliament. Beyond fiscal performance in terms of legislation, oversight, appropriation, and representation. I am pleased to report that indeed 
Parliament and Government of Uganda have made a significant gain in the protection of our national values and furtherance of the aspirations of our people. As I will, I will later enumerate the achievements of legislature registered in the third session, I would not have, it would have not been possible without the consistent, reliable, and remarkable support from His Excellency, the President. We want to thank you, His Excellency, so much for the support. Honorable members, here you can clap for the President. The President of the Republic of Uganda has done a lot to Parliament, who is also a Commander-in-Chief of Armed Forces, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Aware of the leadership, as for the performance of government and societal growth, the development and remarkable performance of 11th Parliament is indeed a testimony of the President's inspirational leadership and unwavering support towards legislature and judiciary. Your Excellency, we do appreciate you as leaders of the House. Your Excellency, as leaders, we affirm our unwavering support and commitment to the realization of your vision for your beloved country without fear or favor. We are aware that the call for leadership sometimes comes with the risk of, of being misunderstood, being criticized, being opposed, accused, sanctioned, or even rejected. But we owe it to our society to stand firm, and the good Lord will always be with us on that. On the right side of history, and we shall live history, and people will remember what we have done as a country at the time we we're here. And as our motto says, for God and my country. In such times, we are reminded of the biblical verse, Psalms 107, verses 28, 31. It says, The Lord still the storm to whisper, and the waves at the sea were hushed. The people were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them that their desires had happened. Your Excellence and Honorable Members, the road to the Uganda we desire may be long and sometimes challenging, but we will be there at one time. We require the consistency, commitment to our national values and aspirations, the unity and hard work. Being united alone without hard work cannot make us get what we want. Do not be discouraged by all the noises around and wherever and actions of detractors and enemies of progress. Your Excellency, during the third session of the 11th Parliament, in pursuit to the vision of a transformed, independent, and a people-centered parliament. Firmly executed its core functions of legislation, oversight, representation, and appropriation. Guided by the performance principles of responsiveness, efficiency, and effectiveness, the parliament significantly reduced the turnover round time of house business through timely consideration of bills, motions, reports, and presidential appointees 
approval among others. In addition there, there has been a tremendous improvement in the quality of legislative output. To this end, Parliament held 87 sittings during which five oaths were administered, five oaths we administered five new members of Parliament. We passed 47 bills where 23 bills were in furtherance to the government program on RAPEX. We passed 42 resolutions, 62 reports were adopted. And as I said, out of the 47 bills passed in this third session, 23 bills were in furtherance of the government policy on rationalization of government agencies and public expenditure, RAPEX. The 11th Parliament supports the effort of executive in streamlining government operations, enhancing efficiency, and ensuring that the public resources are efficiently and effectively used. In cases where Parliament has descended on a mismatch between the objective of rationalization and the stated intention of the bill, the House resolved that the bills be withdrawn by the relevant sector ministers to enable further review by cabinet before they are reintroduced, and that is as per the law. Your Excellence, this is a complementary working relationship that 11th Parliament has encapsulated with the arms of government. At the end of the day, efficient and effective responsive service delivery requires intra-governmental coordination and complementary. The 11th Parliament is fully cognizant of this precondition. Your Excellency, in order to ensure adequate financing of government expenditure priorities for financial year 2024-2025, the legislature passed tax and revenue bills Pass one to Article 152.1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and Section 8 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015. Your Excellency and Honorable Members, in furtherance to the rights of members to introduce the private members' bills and pass one to Article 944b of the 1995 Constitution and Rule 121 of the Rules of Procedure, the House granted leave to five members to introduce private members' bills, thereby fostering inclusive and participatory governance. In the pursuit of effective representation and oversight, members raised and received responses to 195 urgent responses from the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, thank you. The Right Honorable Prime Minister responded to 323 questions from the members, written questions in addition to that. The House considered six ministerial statements and five statements from leader of opposition in parliament. Your Excellency, the 11th parliament as a people-centered parliament receives and considers various concerns from the public to this end. During the third session, the house considered eight petitions from the public. Furthermore, 
Your Excellency, Parliament, Parliamentary Commission successfully organized a validation workshop for a mid-term review strategic plan for fiscal year 2020-2021, 2024-2025, during which workshop honorable members and parliamentary staff and other stakeholders shared valuable ideas and insights. This reaffirms our commitment to good governance and sustainable development. Your Excellency and members of Parliament, despite the remarkable performance registered during the third session, it was not all rosy. We regrettably lost one sting legislator and other eminent sons and daughters of this country. Your Excellency, on Thursday, 18 January 2024, this country woke up with the devastating news of the demise of a third Honorable Cecilia Atimogwal and the woman MP, then the woman MP of Dokolo District. She was a legendary legislator, inspirational leader, a mentor, and a statewoman with unrivaled pre-degree. In addition, on the 18th November 2023, the country lost Honorable Joyce Mpanga, a trailblazer of women's rights, an eminent educationalist, and a former member of parliament and a minister. She was a key pillar in women democratization, uh, democratization process. Your Excellency, on 22nd July, the nation also lost another eminent former legislator, Honorable Hussein Chanjo, the former member of parliament of Makindia West constituency. He was a vote defender of human and people rights. Still during the same period, the country lost Honorable Henry Chamber Kisada Magumba, a renowned politician, a civil servant, a former minister, and we also lost Dr. Martin Alike, a renowned businessman, a diplomat, and a first dental surgeon in Uganda. Honorable members, may we please rise to observe a minute of silence to honor all those departed and recognition of their enormous contribution to the growth of the, and development of this country, Uganda. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Your Excellency, during the third session, the Parliament of Uganda proudly hosted two major conferences. The conference of the speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth, that is CISPOC, and the 86th committee meeting of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, that is CPA. African region, where we have the chairman of CPA African region, right here, right Honorable Lucas. You're most welcome. In addition, Uganda also hosted the 19th summit of the non-aligned movement and the group of 77, G77 plus China, and the third South and South Summit. Your Excellency, I want to take this opportunity to formally congratulate you upon achieving the chairmanship of NAM and G77. Congratulations. And this is up to 2027. 
just a reminder that the leadership is up to 2027. On behalf of legislature, we express our utmost faith and delight that your tenure as a chair will witness as the remarkable strikes in cementing the cooperation among members of NAM and G77 plus China. Relatedly, Your Excellency, the Parliament of Uganda continues to play a crucial leadership, leadership role in various interparliamentary bodies through which our national interests are ably articulated. The Speaker of Parliament of Uganda, who was previously chair the Standing Committee of the Conference of the Speakers and Presiding Officers of the Commonwealth up to 2024, currently deputized by India. In addition, she spoke a position which will be held in 2077. Just a correction here that the Speaker of Uganda is the chairperson of CISPOC, and the Deputy Speaker is the first Vice Chairperson of CISPOC, and this also goes up to 2027. Your Excellency, that is a sign that we are still there. Your Excellency and Honorable Members, this conference was significant in enhancing the global stature of Uganda among international community of the nations in as far as the international cooperation and collaboration is concerned. The conference underscored the imperative of coexistence and respect for values, cultures, and traditions of other states. It is also reaffirmed that while differences in perspectives are in inevitable, they should always be approached within a framework of friendship, cooperation, coexistence, and mutual understanding. Your Excellency, Uganda's position in this important conference was not just as a host, but also a guide, a mediator, a friend to all nations represented. Our efforts in organizing such meaningful and successful conferences were not in vain, as they had a significant multiplier effect on the local economy and left a lasting impression on the hearts and minds of all the participants, Uganda being the pearl of Africa. Your Excellency, we thank you for gracing the conference and sharing the words of wisdom with all the speakers and the delegates that came to Uganda. We want to thank you so, so much. We do not take this for granted. Your invaluable support was very, very instrumental in ensuring the success of all these conferences. We do not take that still for granted. The financials all came from you, and we can not thank you any more than that. Your Excellency, as we embark on the fourth session, we will continue to count on you, on your inspirational and guidance, which at the same time is bettering our own efficiency effectiveness and responsiveness of legislature. I love the saying that you always say, these are young people, they are all learning. And indeed, we are all learning. Pursuant to Article 94.4 of the Constitution of Uganda and Rule 25.1 of the Rules of Procedure, priority will be accorded to government business this will require timely introduction of government business for parliamentary conditions by the Prime Minister. 
Your Excellency, the Parliament of Uganda is a people-centered legislature. This implies that the common Ugandan is at the center of the parliamentary processes and decisions. In the furtherance to this, therefore, and in the furtherance to Article 95.2 of the Constitution of Uganda and Rule 17.1 of Rules of Procedure, during the fourth session, Parliament will hold regional outreach sittings that will cover four traditional regions in Uganda. That is North, East, West, and Central. Your Excellency, we take this opportunity first to thank you for accepting Parliament to have those regional sittings. And we also want to take this opportunity to invite you to grace the first sitting that will be held in Gulu. The inaugural outreach sitting will be on 29th to 30th, August 2024 at Kaunda Grounds in Gulu City, Northern Uganda. And that's where we are requesting that you come and open the session in Gulu. I take this singular honor to sincerely invite you for and on behalf of Parliament and the people of Northern Uganda who will have a sitting there so that we can be able to address the House on various matters of public importance, especially affecting that particular region. Honorable members, allow me in a special way to appreciate His Excellency the President of Republic of Uganda, and the First Lady, Mama Janet Museveni, who is also a Minister of Education and Sports, for the enormous support they have given to sports. We want to thank you so, so much. This support is demonstrated in various ways. For the first time, our national team, Uganda Cranes, is going to play in Nambole tomorrow. And that is out of all the support that you have given to Nambole National Stadium. And we also want to thank you, Your Excellency, for ensuring that this year we were able to win the hosting of AFCON. Uganda will be hosting AFCON and providing money for all the infrastructural development that is required by AFCON. I want to invite all of you to go and support our national team, Uganda Cranes, that will be playing tomorrow. And the chief guest have been informed by the State Minister of Sports that the chief guest will be my brother, General MK. Please join him in supporting our young people while they play. Your Excellency, the return of these home games to Nambole wouldn't have been really possible if you didn't have passion and love for your country. And if mama didn't have passion and love for these young, young people with the talents. In a special way, I want to thank, on top of thanking His Excellency, I want to thank Cabinet for approving that payments, all those payments. I want to thank Parliament of Uganda. I want to thank the Engineering Brigade that has done a good job. Thank you, and I want to thank the Football Association, that is uh, FUFA. Your Excellency, I also want to take this opportunity to ensure that this time round we create a niche 
to, to, I want to take this opportunity to ask members that we create a niche in sports. We need to encourage our sports people. We need to encourage our children who are talented to ensure that they get what they get. As we conclude, Your Excellency, I know Mama as a prayerful person. Mama, as our children go to pray, to play tomorrow, kindly pray for them. Thank you. Item number five, invitation by the right honorable speaker to His Excellency the President to deliver at Parliament an address on the state of the nation in accordance with Article 1011 of the Constitution. Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, it is your mandate under Article 101 one of the constitution that at the beginning of each session of parliament to deliver to parliament an address on the state of nation. Honorable members, as we welcome the president to deliver his address on the state of nation, I draw to your attention and urge you to abide by rule 10 of the rules of procedure which provides in sub rule three that while the president in making a statement in parliament he shall be heard in silence and his statement shall not be followed by any comment or question pursuant to rule 10 10 4 a of the rules of procedure i now take this singular honor and privilege to invite you, Your Excellency, to address this August House and by extension, the nation. You're most welcome, Mr. President. <laughs> 